Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the mute and solo preferences in Reaper. So let's go to our preferences. In the options menu right here, go down here to our preferences. Then we'll scroll down under audio to mute and solo. These are the mute preferences or settings, and these are the solo preferences or settings. So let's go through these. The first option up here is going to automatically mute any track if it gets too loud. Now, the purpose of this is let's say you're recording some drums, and the drummer hits a cymbal too hard, and you have your mic preamp cranked, or maybe you wired something wrong or back into itself, so it's feeding back into the channel. This feature is meant to protect your speakers or any other audio equipment that you don't want to hit too hard or too loud. The default is plus 18. So let me show you how this works. I have a tone generator on this track. And if we bring it up, we can start to hear it. Let's bring it all the way up to plus 18 and watch what happens. The track automatically mutes. Right here, see how it says it's auto muted? We could unmute it, but then it mutes again because the signal generator is still plus 18 or more. We could bring it down and unmute it, but if we bring it back up, it's going to mute when we get to plus 18, once again to protect our speakers. But we could change the setting in our preferences right over here. If you want to be a bit safer, we could set it a bit lower, like plus eight. Now, if we bring it up, at plus eight, it mutes the track. Let's put it back to the default. There's an option over here to reset on playback start. This is on by default. So if I bring this down and hit play, it unmutes the track. But if it gets loud again, it's going to mute it again. And if we hit play, it resets it, but this is already up, plus 19, so it mutes it again. So if we bring it back down, hit play, it's going to automatically unmute it. Once again, it's just meant to save our speakers, and we could change the setting right here. We could also choose, instead of automatically muting on any track, just to mute on the master track. And if we choose this, if we bring it up, it's not going to mute this track. But it still mutes the sound. If we go up here to the view menu and check out the master track, we can see that our master track is auto-muted based on what we did here. If we bring it back down and unmute it, we could hear it working again. But if we bring it up too high, it auto mutes that master track. And if we hit play, it unmutes it. And we could also choose to turn it off altogether. So now, if we bring it up, no matter how loud, it's not going to auto mute that track or the master track. So you want to be careful with that setting. I'm going to put it back to the default. At plus 18. Now, down over here, we have a track mute fade. By default, it's at the five milliseconds. So, if you mute a track or unmute it, it's going to fade out and fade in just to avoid any clicking or any glitching as the mute turns on and off. But we could change it to zero if you want it to be faster or as high as 100 if you want it to be smoother. But once again, the default is five milliseconds. And that usually works pretty good. Then down over here, by default, it's not going to process muted tracks. So it'll save CPU time with big projects where we mute unused tracks. So let's go to a project with a lot of tracks. And if I scroll down, there's a bunch of guitars over here I'm not using. So if I mute them, 
by default, it's not going to use any CPU processing. So if you're using a big project and a lot of unused tracks, make sure you leave that on. But if we turn it off, these tracks are still going to use processing, even if they're muted. But by default, this is on. So our muted tracks aren't going to use any CPU processing. Then down over here, we have our solo settings. The first option deals with solo in front. We can adjust the dimming. Let me give you an example. I have a project over here with a guitar and a drum machine. And it sounds like this. Now by default, solo in front is turned off. So if I solo the guitar, we don't hear the drums, not at all. And that's how solo normally works. But if we turn on, under options, solo in front, it's just gonna dim the other tracks. So if I hit solo, We can still hear the drums, but a lot lower. And how much lower is our dimming setting? So by default, it's minus 18, but we could change it to anything we want. Let's try minus eight. Now let's hear it. So now it dims it just a bit. So we can hear our guitar in front, but we still hear the rest of the tracks. That's what solo in front is used for. And again, we can change the setting right here. It defaults to minus 18, but you can set it however you want. And I should also mention, we could set this with a continuous controller. Let's go to our actions, right here, show action list. And if we type into our filter, Solo in front, there's an action right here to adjust the solo in front dim. I'm gonna assign this to my MIDI controller right there. Now I can adjust that controller and it'll change the dim or the volume of the other tracks that are not soloed on the fly. So we can control that with a MIDI fader or knob using the action right here. Or we can adjust it in our preferences right here. But I'm going to put it back to minus 18. Now down over here is also on by default. Solo's default to in place solo. And what that means is if we're sending our track to other tracks, maybe as a bus or an effect send and return. We're going to hear that routing even if we solo the track. Let me give you an example. Let's put some delay and reverb on the guitar by dragging this to our delay and setting it. Now let's send it to the reverb right here. So now if I solo the track with our drums, we still hear the effects because we're sending this track to a delay and our reverb, but these tracks aren't soloed, yet we're still hearing them. And that's what's called solo in place, which is on by default. So we're gonna hear the track and any other tracks it's routing to. Again, like a bus or an effect send and return. But if you don't want that effect, just turn it off here. And now if we solo the guitar. We don't hear the effects. But we can alter that behavior without even switching it here. Once again, by default, 
This is on, but we could switch it by holding Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. So again, right now, we're gonna hear the delay and reverb. But if I hold on Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, it's not gonna solo in place. So I just hear that guitar. And we could do the opposite. We could leave it off here. And now if we hit solo, we just hear the guitar. But if we hold on the modifier, then we do hear the effects. Well, now it solos in place. But once again, so in place is on by default, but you can always swap it out using Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. And then finally, we have an option down here, which is off by default. If we solo a track in place, while the track is sending to another solo track, if this option is on, it'll make the parent in a folder or hardware send effectively unsoloed. So it unsolos it later down the line. Again, it's off by default, because you usually don't want it. But if you want the option, just turn it on right here. But again, this is off by default. So that's pretty much it. That's the mute and solo settings, or mute and solo preferences in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.